Hello. Today, we will be talking about efficient rollout strategies for Bayesian optimization. Before we dive into the details, let's talk about black box functions first. The goal in black box optimization is to find the global minimum x star, whose value is smallest in a domain omega. The objective f is assumed continuous and is black box because it's expensive to evaluate, has no gradient information, and is possibly contaminated with noise. Black box functions are ubiquitous in engineering and machine learning, and you might think of them as outputting the result of a complicated simulation or physical process. Examples include simulating an airplane wing to calculate lift, manipulating a robot arm given a controller, determining how to fold strands of protein in 3D space, or computing the win rate of a reinforcement learning model. Uh, these are hard objectives to minimize in part because they're so expensive to query. Bayesian optimization is a model-driven way of efficiently minimizing these functions. It operates in two parts. First, it builds a stochastic surrogate that models the objective using all prior data. You can see this on the left, and the most common model used is a Gaussian process, uh, the mean and uncertainty given in red and magenta, respectively. Then, in the second part of BO, an acquisition function determines the next evaluation. The most common acquisition function is expected improvement, which you can see on the right. Expected improvement measures the expected reduction in the objective in the next iteration, and we evaluate its arg max. So once we evaluate the next point, we can update our model, which you can once again see on the left. In fact, our next evaluation is quite close to the global minimizer, uh, so we can stop here. But in general, we can query the acquisition function and repeat this process for a fixed number of iterations. To be more precise, we write expected improvement as the expected reduction in the objective according to the GP posterior. We can then write out the exact VO algorithm as you see here. Once again, the primary two steps involve A, building a model, and B, maximizing an acquisition function, which we've written here as expected improvement. A key challenge in BO is accounting for the impact of future evaluations, which is known as being non-myopic. We do so by modifying the acquisition function to take in as input H, which represents the remaining budget. Why am I accounting for budget help? Here's a classic toy example in which we know next to nothing about the objective itself. We compare BO with a budget of one and two respectively in the middle, and in the right. If you have a budget of one left, the logical thing to do is evaluate in the origin, at the middle of the domain. This is, in fact, what expected improvement in, in the middle tells you to do. However, if we account for a budget of two, then you can see in the right image the so-called non-myopic acquisition function that, in fact, playing to evaluate away from the origin is a logical thing to do. But how do we actually go about computing these non-myopic acquisition functions? Well, we wrote out the definition of expected improvement, so why don't we modify it by computing, say, the expected improvement over the next h steps, or the expected reduction in the objective over the next h steps? This is a little vague, so let's be more straightforward. What we're going to do is, for each point in our optimization domain, omega, we're going to forward simulate BO using expected improvement H steps into the future. Instead of evaluating F, which is expensive, we sample from our stochastic model, which is cheap. So we're going to do this forward simulation for each point in our domain, and we're going to pick out the best one that gives us the best simulation results. Uh, this entire process is known as rollout. As it turns out, rollout gives you certain performance guarantees. In particular, rollout of expected improvement will converge at least as fast as expected improvement itself in expectation. And the same is true of any generic deterministic acquisition function. Because our model is stochastic, we can't just do this forward simulation once. We have to average n forward simulations for sufficiently large n. And um, this is just Monte Carlo integration of an expectation. Unfortunately, rollout has a prohibitive cost. 
and simulations of HBO iterations for each point in a domain omega gets really expensive really fast, which is arguably why rollout has not been deployed in practice. Our paper presents two strategies for cheaper rollout. The first is variance reduction, which is a classic family of techniques for essentially increasing the accuracy of our Monte Carlo estimator by decreasing the variance of the associated random variable. We don't go into the details, but we are able to effectively decrease the computational overhead of rollout by orders of magnitude. This can be seen in this figure. Uh, so the top row represents Monte Carlo uh, estimation of rollout for different horizons without any variance reduction. Uh, this is using 50H samples. You can see that the rollouts themselves aren't very useful because they're simply too noisy. In the bottom, you can see rollout using our variance reduction techniques, and we've captured to a high fidelity these uh, rollout acquisition functions, so they look much better. Um, rollouts for horizons 5 and 6 still look a little noisy, but in, in practice, we would use more than 50H samples. Because we have reduced the computational overhead of rollout, we were able to run some interesting experiments on synthetic functions to understand rollout's empirical behavior. What we found is that while rollout doesn't really help much when the objective is unimodal, it does provide uh, uh, sorry, performance benefits when the objective is multimodal. This is good because multimodal functions are, well, the challenging ones to minimize. Uh, unimodal functions aren't really that hard. The second strategy for efficient rollout that we present is policy search. There are many other acquisition functions out there we kind of just mentioned, expect an improvement. And so the general idea behind policy search is to roll out, once again, uh, each acquisition function, but only on its argmax, and pick the best simulation result once again. So what this does is it avoids a full, out on, uh, a full rollout on every point in your domain, which, as you can imagine, gets really expensive, especially as the dimension increases. For the same synthetic functions, we found empirically that policy search does at least as well as the best performing acquisition function. There also seems to be, as, as you can see in the histogram on the bottom row, uh, a correlation between an acquisition's performance and its percentage use. Rollout gives you certain performance guarantees in theory. Uh, and in our final experiment, we checked if this was actually true in practice. As it turns out, it's not. If the Gaussian process model is correct, or in more precise terms, if objectives are sampled from its kernel, rolling out further, in fact, gives you better performance. However, if the model is incorrect and it's, say, overly or underly smooth, as we consider here, performance can be reversed. In fact, rolling out further gives you worse results. And you can see this in the middle and the right images, respectively. This concludes our presentation on efficient rollout strategies for Bayesian optimization. We thank you for taking the time to listen and encourage those who are interested to read our paper. Thank you very much.